I want to call your attention to 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse number 17. I'm going to read down to verse 21 and then I'm going to skip to verse number 34. 2 Kings 4, 17. And the woman conceived and bore son at the season that Elijah had said unto her according to the time of life. And that when the child was grown, it fell on the day that he went out to his fathers to the reapers. And he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad to carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him, he brought him to his mother and set him on her knees until noon. And then he died. And when she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and she went out. Verse 34. And he went up and laid upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and eyes upon his eyes and hands upon his hands and he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm then he returned and walked into the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself again upon him and the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes i want to talk from the thought it's the wrong time to die it's the wrong time to die Many of you are dealing with several different attacks and different situations that's coming from different angles. Uh, many of you, if you would testify and tell the truth, it's been seeming like there is one attack after another, one situation after another situation. And you're saying, God, when am I going to get a break? Sometimes we're so focused on what's happening that we're not sensitive to when it's happening. Satan is very strategic when he attacks us. Satan not only knows what to do, but he also knows when to do it. Even when you look at Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus was being tempted of the devil, the Bible says that the devil came to tempt him after 
after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible says, and then he began to hunger. Satan knew that he was vulnerable. Satan knew that it was a time that he was weak. And now is the time to attack him. And not only that, after three temptations the bible says that he left for another opportune time he knew when to attack and many of you are so focused on what the devil is doing and who's walking away and how you're feeling and the pain that you're burying that you're not focused on the fact that if the devil is attacking you like this you must be close to a turnaround Satan knows that you're on the verge of a breakthrough. Satan knows that you're on the verge of a miracle. And he knows that if he can distract you now, it would deter you from your destiny. But you got to make up in your mind and declare over your life that it's the wrong time to die. I refuse to die now. I refuse for my ministry, my business, my aspiration, my spirit to die. I'm going to live to see everything God promised come to pass. I'm going to live to see the manifestation of every word spoken over my life. David made it clear. He said, I will not die. But I'm going to live to declare the works of the Lord. God is getting ready to cancel the funeral. God is going to cancel the chaos. God is going to bring an end to everything the devil is trying to do to kill you. You are going to live. And when I look at the text and when I look at the Bible, uh, there is a character in the Bible before we go to this text that shows us how God can cancel death. I love the story about the King Hezekiah. In 2 Kings chapter number 20, there is a report there of Hezekiah receiving a word from the prophet Isaiah that he's getting ready to die. The Bible says that it opens up with priorities demanded. He says, says set your house in order. Hezekiah you're getting ready to die. Make sure your business is together. Make sure everything is in order. Make sure that your priorities are straight. There is priorities demanded but there is a promise of death. He says put your house in order for you shall surely die and not live. Death is knocking at your door. Even though it seems premature there is a promise of death. But the Bible Bible says that even though priorities are demanded, a promise of death, he makes a powerful decision. The Bible said that he turns his face to the wall. Theologians would say that he turned his face to the wall, number one, because he wanted privacy. When you're going through, sometimes you have to isolate yourself. Sometimes you got to turn your face from people and turn it towards God. Sometimes the reason why we can't hear God is because because we're so in tune with everybody else and if you want to hear God sometimes you got to desensitize yourself from the voices of everybody else he turns his face to the wall not only for isolation but the text would suggest that he turns his face to the wall because it was facing the temple his heart was turned towards the temple of God the house of God the things and the affairs of God he made a powerful decision but then he had a personal dialogue. The Bible said he started talking to God and said God remember how I served you. Remember how I served you with the law of your heart. I served you and I didn't do it for a show. I served you and I didn't do it for accolades and attention. But God when I served you I did it from a pure heart. I was real with my worship and although I can't shout now and although I can't worship now and although I can't offer sacrifices now remember when I could do it and I did it hallelujah and sometimes you got to cause God to pull the record and say God I don't have the strength to do it now but when I had it I was faithful I don't have the money to give like I used to but when I had it I was faithful you got to start thinking to yourself if God would to pull the record to determine if I qualify for a miracle what would he remember would God remember when you were not faithful 
Uh, Will God remember when you were a complainer? Uh, Will God remember when you were slow for and a procrastinator? Uh, you got to give God something to remember. Uh, I want God to look at my life uh, and say, I remember how you worship me. Uh, I remember how he praised me when nobody else did. Uh, I remember how he went uh, when he couldn't afford to. Uh, I remember, y'all ain't gonna help me. Uh, I want God to remember. He started talking to God and said, God, remember, I served you with a law of your heart. I wasn't like other kings who followed after idols. I wasn't like other kings, hallelujah, that turned their heart against you. But I remained faithful. And somebody watching, you know you qualify for a miracle. Hallelujah, you've been through storms and you still was faithful. You lost up, you lost charge and lost cars and houses but you were like Job though you slay me yet will I trust you hallelujah you were like David and said I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth priorities were demanded promise of death a powerful decision a personal dialogue and God prolonged his days the Bible Bible says that after he started talking to God, the prophet was heading out of the courts and God made him turn around and he told Hezekiah, said, Hezekiah, God heard you and I want you to know he's going to add 15 years to your life. I came to prophesy, get ready for an extension. All right, you ain't happy. Those that are watching, I tell you to prophesy over your life. I'm ready for an extension. Extension. God is getting ready to extend the expiration. I know it seemed like it's supposed to be over. I know it seemed like you're getting ready to die. But God sent me to tell you he's getting ready to cancel the funeral. He's giving you an extension. I dare you to come in and put expect an extension. God is adding to your business. He's adding to your relationship. He's adding to your ministry. He's adding to your anointing. God is adding to your vision. Expect an extension. Glory to God. He cancels death and then here it is. And this particular pericope, God is getting ready to do it again. There's a situation where in the Bible says that there is a woman in Shudem. The Bible calls her in verse 8 a notable woman. And the Bible says that she went now and prepared a meal for prophet Elijah. The Bible says that he came and passed by through the area regularly. And the Bible says that she could perceive now that this man is a man of God. She says to her husband, verse number nine, hallelujah, look now, I know this man is a holy man of God and he passes by regularly. Her perception of the man of God was proper. You can't receive what you don't respect and sometimes before God will release the promise he will reveal your perception and the Bible says that she decided that we're going to take care of the man of God we're going to prepare a meal for this man so she gives him substance but substance wasn't enough the text says in verse number 10 that not only only does she prepare substance but she also prepares shelters. The Bible says that they make an upper room, hallelujah for the man of God. Wanted to make sure that the vessel was comfortable. Put a bed in there. Put a chair in there. A table and a lamp. And the Bible said that they wanted him as often as he's passed by to come in and dwell. <laughs> Hallelujah. They made room for a miracle. <laughs> they knew that they needed something down the road. <laughs> they knew that they had a request that they
they wanted God to fulfill. So they were prepared now for what they would receive later. Y'all don't know when to shout. I'll say it again. You got to prepare now. You got to make room for a miracle. You got to make room for more. I dare you right where you are. I dare you to declare. I'm making room. Glory to God. I'm making room for promotion. I'm making room for growth. I'm making room for business. This is the season that you got to prepare for what you prayed for. Glory to God. The Bible says that she makes room for more. And after a while, the prophet notices how kind this woman is. And he says to his servant, listen, I want you to call, hallelujah, the Shudamite woman. And the Bible says she called him and she stood, hallelujah, in front of him. Greetings. Listen, I'm Daniel Latimer, and I'm so grateful that you've joined the broadcast today, Learning with Latimer. I'm excited to be a part of this network, and I think that God has a word for your life. Anytime God wants to line you up for victory, he gives you a voice. John the Baptist said that I'm only a voice crying out in the wilderness, and I pray that I become a voice that helps guide you through the season that you're in. Listen, the word of God is going to bless you today. I want you to start liking. I want you to start sharing. Come on, let's do it now. Come on, I'm gonna give you time. Those of you that's coming in, I want you to be my virtual evangelist. I want you to help me spread this message to as many people that you can. So like, share, I want you to come in. If anything is being said that blesses you, I need your participation. I know that we're not physically together in a church, so you can't jump, shout, say amen, and, and give me the energy, but you can do it virtually. So give me energy virtually. Like, tag, share, let people know that Daniel Latimer is on. Invite them to learn with Latimer. Let's go into a message already in progress. Uh, and said, look, you've been so kind to us, verse 32 or 13. Uh, you've been so kind. You've, you've showed us so much care. Uh, what is it uh, that we can do for you? Uh, she said, I have everything I want. Uh, I dwell amongst my own people. Uh, hallelujah. I'm a noble woman. Uh, but the servant said, you know what? Uh, her husband is old uh, and she wants uh, a child. The Bible said that the prophet looks and says about this time next year, you're going to have a child. By this time next year, you're going to have a son. Look at verse 16. He says, oh, if you give God, hallelujah, one year, what you've been praying for and what seems impossible. I'm getting ready to bring it into fruition. God sent me to tell somebody that he's getting ready to do a quick work. You've been praying for years, waiting for years, and it seems like stuff ain't working. But God is getting ready to perform a quick work. I dare you to clap your hands and give him praise with you. Come on, I dare you to give God praise while you're watching. Hallelujah. The Bible says now in verse 17 that the woman conceived. The Bible says that she has that son. The Bible says that the thing that the prophet prophesied has now come to pass. But something happens in the text. The Bible says in verse 18 that the child grew and it happened on a day, hallelujah, that he was going out to his fathers, to the reapers. And the Bible says that he said to his father, my head, my head. Theologians would suggest that it was so hot that this child was suffering from a heat stroke. Hallelujah. Notice the area that Satan attacks. The child said, my head, my head. 
any time God is getting ready to give you a new miracle any time God is getting ready to usher you into fresh territory Satan attacks your head he attacks your mind and I came to speak to every viewer that's been dealing with mind battles seem like the devil has been trying to talk you out of your miracle been trying to make you feel like you're not worth it I come against depression I come against suicide I come against nightmares I come against those spirits that keep hunting you from the past making you think about stuff God delivered you from I deliver you in the spirit your mind will be set free I speak it over your life that you're going to be clothed in your right mind I dare you to look at somebody in your house if they're driving in your car I dare you to touch somebody even if it's yourself and tell them I ain't losing my mind I may lose a house I may lose a friend I may lose money I may lose a job but I'm going to keep my mind I dare you to praise him because you still got your mind I wish I had somebody I dare you to praise him because you still got your mind Glory to God. Uh, Bible says now, uh, hallelujah, that the father said now take him back. Uh, tells his servants that take him back, uh, hallelujah, to his mother. Uh, they took him back to the mother. Uh, and the text says uh, that the mother now, uh, hallelujah, allows him to lay in a lap. Uh, and the Bible said that he laid there until he died. Uh, now notice now the thing that they have been praying for. Uh, the promise they had received received is now in their hands dead what do you do when the thing that God gives you dies you know God gave you the ministry but it seems like it's dying in your hands you know God gave you that spouse but it seems like that relationship is dying you know that God gave you the business but it seems like the business is dying but I came to prophesy to those that are watching it's the wrong time to die glory to God the Bible said that he died she goes now in verse number 21 and the Bible says that she takes him to the man of God's room it's the same area that she receives the prophecy the Bible says that when she receives the prophecy of a son the Bible says she's standing in the doorway of the prophet's room and now when the prophet of the baby is dead, she took him back to the same place she received the word. All right, let's try it again. She takes the promise back to the same place that she receives the word. And sometimes when things look like it's not working, sometimes when things look like it's dying, you got to take that thing back to the place that you received the word. And the Bible says that she fetched for the man of God. Bible says that she tells the prophet. Hallelujah. Did not tell you not to lie to me. I got the child, but now he's dead. The Bible says that the prophet tells his servant, take my staff. Go lay it on the boy's face. The woman said, no, no. I don't want a substitute. I don't want a middleman. I'm not going nowhere until you come. Sometimes when you need a miracle, you can't afford a middleman. You don't need a substitute. But you need God to show up himself. And 
got somebody watching. You've been in a dire situation. Your situation is so bad that it looked like it's not going to live. But God sent me to tell you that he's coming himself. Oh, Lord. The Bible says that the prophet comes in the room and the Bible says that he shut the door laid on the child. The Bible said he stretched on top of the sun. When he stretched the first time, the Bible says that the boy was still dead. But even though he was dead, his body got hot. The first stretch was activation. He left out the room, started walking back and forth. Came back and stretched on him again. The Bible says when he did it again, the boy sneezed seven times. The first stretch was activation. The second stretch was manifestation. God sent me to tell you if you stretch one time and nothing happens. Stretch again. Hold on. If you stretch one time and you don't get the job, stretch again. If you stretch one time and your body don't get healed, stretch again. Somebody is frustrated because you've stretched and nothing happened. You've stretched your faith and nothing changed. You stretched your money and nothing changed. But I came to tell somebody you got to stretch again. Hold on. I got to leave you. But the Bible says that that boy died. But it was the wrong time. Look at the text. I got to give you a loan. But the Bible says that he went out to the field and went to the reapers. He went out in the field. It was the time for them to reap. And right there in the reaping season, the devil attacked him. In the reaping season, he had a head attack. In his reaping season, the devil tried to take him out. And I came to tell somebody, don't die in your reaping season. Oh, Lord, don't die. You're too close to things working. You're too close to things shifting. You're too close to things turning. It's your reaping season. I dare you right where you are to lift up your hands and say, I'm going to live been through too much to miss my season. Cried too much to miss my moment. Been through too much. Been sick too long to miss my season. It's reaping season. Yeah. It's reaping season. I came to prophesy to everybody watching. You get ready to reap if you faint not. It's your season to get more than you ever had before. You're going to live. I rebuke sickness. I rebuke depression. I rebuke curses. You're going to live. You're gonna live.
Hey guys, listen, I know that you're being blessed by the word that you're hearing. I know that God is speaking into your heart as you are listening. And I pray that the word is transformational. Listen, we're going back. Don't go nowhere. We're going back. The word of God is going to transform your life. But I want you to take a moment and partner with my ministry. I need everybody that can who will to sow into good ground. Lives are changed, yeah. souls are saved, yokes are destroyed through the preaching and teaching yeah. of the gospel. And I want you to partner with me to sow a seed of $21. You can do it through Cash App, dollar sign, Pastor Daniel Latimer. That is dollar sign, Pastor Daniel Latimer. The giving port is on the screen. And you can also go to my website, www.daniellatimer.com. I want you to partner. I want you to sow. You can do it right now, the Bible says that a man is purposed in his heart what he shall give. That means that God speaks to your heart as to what to give. It takes the gimmicks out of the equation. And so I want you to give with a liberal heart. You know, God actually allows us to choose how we want our harvest. Yeah, that's right. He allows you to choose how you want your harvest. He says that if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. So I want you to sow. That's it. Dollar sign, Pastor Daniel Latimer, or my website, www.daniellatimer.com. Let's go back into this God said word. God bless. Live. 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 In spite of the pain. Live. In spite of the persecution. Do me a favor, right where you are, I dare you to rebuke death, I rebuke death over my parents, I rebuke death over my children, over my siblings, over my members, from the oldest to the youngest, I rebuke death, you won't die before your time. I rebuke premature death. I rebuke murders. I rebuke car wrecks. I rebuke sickness. Yes. Live. Live. Come on, right where you are. I tell you to praise him. Praise him for life. Praise him for life. I tell you to praise him. Yeah.
dare you to praise him for life. Come on, I dare you. Millions didn't make it. Millions didn't make it. Millions didn't make it. Oh. But I am one of the ones that did. I'm still here. Praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray.